Join me as I turn this into this. My DIY tape blocking watercolor art. Oh man, what a good day it is to be alive. Welcome to my new craft studio. We are here in my brand new space. I'm really excited about um, this fresh new look we have and this, I'm very blessed to have this space. So welcome. If you don't know me, I'm Casey and this is Social Crafts. Today we are getting into tape blocking watercolor art. So cute. Let me show you some more. Another tape blocking watercolor. And a couple more here. Can you see it? So cute. Man, I, you know, I started watercolors really at the same time as thinking about doing this craft. My mom and aunt are extremely talented with watercolors. So it always, it was very, um, I was very intimidated by it. But once I got down to it and really tried and, and really kind of made it a simple um, art, I fell in love with it. So I'm really excited to show you this craft today and show you what it's all about. So what you'll need is watercolors, of course. Um, a watercolor pad, they come in all different sizes. They come in um, a little bit rough, they paper, rough paper, a little bit smooth paper. Um, so you can play around with what you want. Um, this one's a cold press, so it is a little bit um, rough and bumpy, but I like the texture. And washi tape. Uh, not all washi tape is created equal. I had to find out the hard way. I had bought some um, a little bit cheaper washi tape off Amazon and the watercolor just soaked right through it. So get some really good washi tape. Also brushes, you can use as many or as few brushes as you want. Um, and I decide, I, I like a few so I, so I can play around with it. And um, two glasses or jars of water. And we'll tell you what those are for in a sec. So if you want all of this in one box, you can go to socialcrafts.com and we have craft kits that you can buy one for yourself, you can buy a few to have a craft party. But if you don't wanna battle the craft uh, stores and if it's too intimidating or you just want everything sent straight to you, we do this at socialcrafts.com with a bunch of other craft kits that you can choose from. So check it out if you just want all of this sent to you um, in one piece. Another thing, oh, also I use uh, the skinny washi tape and then I do also use the 5 8 inch wa washi tape in other um, designs as well and that is also included in the box. Um, so let's talk a little bit about watercolors. If you are new to watercolors as I was, um, uh, let's talk about it. So watercolors are water activated. You get a dry palette and to activate the color, you dip your brush in water and then put it on to whatever color you want. The cool thing about watercolors is that you can uh, make them as pigmented, like really strong, or as translucent, like very light, as you want. And so it really makes for this, um, art that doesn't have to be exact. It can be very fluid. It's kind of like you experiment and see where the paint kind of takes you, um, where the water and the paint kind of blend together. So it's really an experimental craft. I'm gonna give you some exercises that will help you, uh, help introduce you and help uh, get you comfortable with what watercolors do. I'm personally not still crazy uh, comfortable. Like if you look, I don't even know if you can see it, but I have a painting behind me and my mom did that for me and there's no way I can still do that. Not yet at least. But with these cool, um, this cool artwork here, it's really about the tape design. The tape design is all the designs that you see crisscross that are not painted. And so I'm going to teach you that art. I'm going to teach you what helped me get to this point and this point, um, and it wasn't that hard. So before we get started, definitely um, you can pause this video because I have put some links in the description below to some videos, some beginner watercolor videos that really helped me out when I was starting out, some exercises that helped me. Um, so I would pause this video, go to those links below, come back to uh, my video, and then I'm gonna show you all about tape blocking and how to create uh, wonderful patterns and easy tips and tricks on how to achieve this craft. So, can't wait to get started. 
So go ahead and pause the video here and play the first two links in the description below. All right, exercise one. With no goal in mind, we're just gonna play. So go ahead and throw some water down on the paper and just paint. Throw some paint down, paint on already wet paper, paint on dry paper, and just see how these uh, paints work. You can see here I'm blotting it up with paper towels. That's another technique um, you can try. And this one, this heart, I put a water heart uh, down first and then I kind of blotted some paint within the heart and it just kind of stays within the um, Within the water. So that's another technique to try and then here I'm really just painting lines with all the different paint brushes try each paintbrush you have Just to see the characteristics of it just to see how it works and You'll get more familiar with the paints You'll get more familiar with the brushes and that's really the goal for this exercise each exercise I do, I am going to speed it up like this because I have so many things to show you. So feel free to push pause at any time and or rewind and to watch it again. Also, you have two uh, cups of water. One is going to be your water wash and that's going to be when you want to rinse off the color of your brushes. So it'll get kind of muddy looking. One you're going to keep clear and that's when you want to use clear water on your paints. So just keep that in mind. Also, so here I'm just working and playing, blending some colors, seeing how it works. Obviously it's not pretty, but we're just playing. Next, I really wanted to see each color on paper that I had in my palette. So I am going to tape down squares so I can color each color onto the piece of paper to see the palette of colors I have. This is the tape you have, and this tape is water resistance. So anywhere you put it down, it's going to resist the water and create these little spaces for you. So you can see I made a grid and with the number of squares of that I have paints. I'm going to do a water wash down first and then take each color separately and paint it into the squares. You can see I'm starting on one side and making it highly pigmented and then brushing it to the other so it gets a little less pigmented with the water. So you can see I'm, I'm water washing it first. I'm beating up here again and then putting down the color and I'm going to let it dry. Not going to take off the tape until it's fully dry. And then you can see all the colors on your palette down at the bottom here. I'm just doing some blending of a couple colors, just choosing some just to see what it's like, how they work, how those colors work together. And that's that. So exercise two using the thicker tape, tape down the sides of the paper and then tape across the paper, um, you know, making five different sections. In this exercise, we are only going to use one color paint to work with. And this is where you have to use your imagination, use the water to dilute it, to make a different color, add less water to make it a heavier color and work with in each section of this painting using just those colors. I used the three blues, so I did use three different blues. And you can see here, I'm using all different easy, really easy design techniques to go from light to dark, to add more water, to just do some splotches in the middle here. The trick is though, the trick of all of these paintings is to have your paint touch the edges of each of your sections that you're painting. You don't want to just paint within the section. You want the paint to touch the edges so that when you remove it, you will see the edges of where the tape was. You can see here, I'm not doing much of anything difficult. I'm more playing with the colors and the transparencies and how each uh, paint, you know, kind of works with the water. I'm more playing with the amount of water within this exercise. And you can see here, this is an example of what I'm talking about, that you want the paint to touch the edges. The top is what you don't want to do. The top, you don't want to just color inside the box because once you remove the tape, it's not going to show a shape. So the bottom, you can see the flowers are overlapping onto the tape and you can paint onto the tape. And when I remove the tape, it will show the shape of that section of where I had the tape. You'll see in this next uh, part where I'm removing the tape from the painting we just did. Make sure it's fully dry before you remove the tape. Fully dry or else some of the paper will come up with it. 
At this point, you want to remove the tape so you're peeling the tape back towards the paper instead of peeling up, just so you avoid uh, ripping some of the paper. And you can see here how there's nice, nice clean lines because all that paint started to touch the lines. Nice clean lines, like gorgeous. So go ahead and pause the video here and you're gonna play the next two links in the description below. Exercise three. All right, this one, we are gonna tape down whatever kind of design you want. If you did get the craft box, we did give you a paper with some design ideas. You can follow that or just do your own. I just did my own here and I just started taping. I put down four vertical lines and then started taping across. Sometimes those lines would go all the way across all the sections. Sometimes they just go through a couple of sections. I really was just kind of winging it until I felt I got a really good design. The other thing when doing this type of design is what's really cool is to not paint on any section that touches the edge of the paper. So then your painting is only gonna be contained in the middle areas of the paper and it will have a nice border. Um, so you'll see me doing that in, um, in the next part. And so just keep going till I get a design that I like. Then in this part, we're going to choose three colors. Just let's choose three colors to work with. So I'm going to choose three and looking at the color palette, I'm, I'm choosing out of the ones I think are going to look good. So here we go. We just start painting. And like I said, again, the most important thing of this craft is for you to paint all the way to the edges of each section. Um, this the the tape is water resistant and this is going to help create the design look really angular and strong as you can see i'm not doing too much difficult work in each um section you know i'm doing dots right here in other sections i filled it completely with paint another section i did lines um another section i'm gonna do some kind of flowers, but look, it's really about just filling each area with a different type of technique. And this is where you can play. This is where it doesn't have to be stressful. It really can just be you trying things. And like you saw there, if you do mess up, you can blot a bunch of water on top of that drawing that you didn't like and blot it up with um, paper towels and most of it will disappear. This one's some circular kind of flower things that I just kind of created. You just want to go ahead and play and fill in each one of these sections. This is just a great way to get familiar with how the paints work and to not try for it to be perfect. Just try to experiment. That's what the fun of this is. The magic is really in the lines that are down. And you'll see once we pick up, um, you know, the tape off the paper, it really creates, no matter what you did within these sections, it really creates a really cool effect. So don't be too hard on yourself. Just experiment, have fun. I found this to be incredibly meditative and I really enjoyed doing this. It was kind of like, a, like an adult coloring book, more creative adult coloring book, super meditative. Remember, I'm not painting any edges that, any sections that touch the edges. So I'll have a great border. And remember to let the paint dry completely before you pick up the paint, pick up the tape. All right, tape is coming off. And this is kind of my most favorite part about this craft is to reveal the painting with the tape off. So just peel off that tape, peel it off slow. It looks fast in this video, but peel it off slow so you don't pick up any of that paper. And there you go. You got yourself a painting. 
All right, here's some more examples that I just wanted to show you. Here's me demonstrating the cactuses that we learned in the cactus video. Um, I will go back and forth between each one of these to add a little more detail. So I'm just doing the base layers right here of each cactus and each flower. And once, once the base layers dry, I go back in for details. If you got the craft box, you got a copy of these examples, giving you a little step-by-step -step on how to achieve these flowers and cactuses that I did. These are some of the things we'll use in the next uh, example. So I'm going in a little white to give it dimension, a little darker color to give it a little more dimension, adding a little pollen, adding some leaves, adding a little darker color for the flower, and then going in and doing dark dots, little spikes onto the cactuses, or lines on that one, and then spikes on that one, and adding tiny little flowers on that one, and then going and adding pollen, pollen on that last flower. All right, so you can see I tape blocked the middle of the paper here. And this one I'm using all the flowers and other flowers that I kind of just made up along the way um, around the tape block blocking. You remember that you can paint a little bit onto the tape because the tape is water resistant. I did kind of just a blending wash on the side there and once that dried, I added more flowers on top of it. And I just really experimented with what I learned and created some more stuff. So then I take the tape off for that one. And again, we're tape blocking in the middle. And this one is when I am using all the cactus knowledge that we uh, learned. So I'm adding a bunch of different cactuses, different sizes. They're a little wonky here and there, but that's what makes watercolors fun is it doesn't have to be exact. They can be a little quirky and that's what's fun. Again, I created another random cactus, kind of maybe an aloe plant on that one and just have fun with it. I did this when I was watching a little TV and it was really just relaxing. I really tried not to put too much pressure on myself to make this perfect. You know, when I thought of this as more of a practice exercise, then after it was done, I was really happy with it. I did a little bit of brown in there for rocks too. I thought it needed a little more dimension and did different colors on the flowers just to give it a little more dimension as well. After that, I remember to let it dry and then I took off the tape in the middle. Then I just used a, a pencil and a black felt tip pen to write a few nice cute little messages and created cards for the this example. Same with this flower one, little congrats. All I really know how to do is block lettering. <laughs> Super cute, so cute. This next one, I really just wanted to show you that really there is no pressure in creating this art. So instead of focusing on each little section and creating a pattern within each little section, I'm actually doing a whole blending paint wash across the whole area I wanna be painting. Right here, I'm just doing a water wash across each section that I want color to be in, just water. Then I'm gonna take color. This one I chose three different colors that I'm gonna blend and I just put the color down. I played with it. I put it across all sections, so I'm not even really paying attention to the exact sections I'm painting in. I'm looking at it more as a whole. Then I added some yellow in the middle, added a little more water everywhere to make sure it blends together, and it's still beautiful. So just wanted to show you that even if you are you know, not wanting to do a pattern in each one of the sections, that's fine too. This is gorgeous in itself, one of my favorites, and this was just a water wash across the whole thing with some paint. It basically, I mean, you can run with this craft all you want. This is just the beginning. I really just gave you the basics, gave you some exercise to get comfortable with watercolors. 
I plan to further my skills in watercolors as well, um, to look up more videos, to uh, just practice, to experiment, and that's, that's basically all it is. I can't wait to see what kind of tape designs you come up with, what kind of creations you end up doing with these watercolors. Um, and when you do, post it on Facebook, post it on Instagram, and tag us at Social Crafts. We wanna see we want to see your creations, so tag us at Social Crafts. Also, don't forget to go to socialcrafts.com and see more craft kits you can buy, get more inspiration, and just see what we're up to. Uh, follow us on Facebook and Instagram at Social Crafts. And also, don't forget to subscribe with us here to see more videos when they post. And I guess that's it. We'll see you next time. Thanks for joining.